All right, so on the second day of class, I've got another activity, another handout for you where we talk about a little bit of web marketing, uh, a little bit of uh, conceptual things. So everyone's computer should be on. Uh, we're going to go to the computer window. So at the top left, double click on computer. Then we will see the network location, classroom data, drive Z as in Zebra. You want to open up Classroom Data Drive Z. And scroll down to our class, which is Campos SEO Wednesday. Let's open that folder there. The stuff from last week is still there. The drawings that I made of some concepts and the syllabus and whatever notes I wrote when we did that activity at the end of the day it's all there but the newest thing that I just added so what you want to do is drag it from my folder to your desktop for flash drive is the file called client marketing strategy so drag that document this word document drag it from my folder to your desktop or if you brought your flash drive you want to you want to copy that over. If you're on your own computer, your own laptop, unfortunately you cannot access our network folder. You'll just have to scoot over to a, an open computer and grab these files, or I can email them to you if you'd like. But you do need to access them through our computers. So copy that client marketing strategy from my folder to your desktop, and then we'll look at it. This, is, this will be our first lecture. <coughs> Again, you can print this later. I think somebody came in and said, I don't know who it was. That's okay. So, this uh, Word document, you can print it, but uh, we'll do that later because the printer's off. And again, you probably don't really want to print this, you want to fill it in. Now, I'm not grading this. You're not turning it in like I said previously. You're just going to fill this in if you find it useful. And I can look at it and I can give you an opinion about it. But let's take a look together at what this marketing strategy document is. So again, I give this out because this is a variation of what my company would do for a potential client. As I said previously, I teach this stuff, but I also do this stuff for a living as part of a company, PMD Interactive. And so when we need to do a good job for a client, we need to know as much as we can about that client to do a good job. And here's one of these important things, the marketing strategy. You would fill that out, and then on the second page, there's these big questions to think about. I'll talk about them and conceptually, and then you yourself have to figure out what might apply, what might be useful to fill in. Again, but you don't need to turn this in. I can give you an opinion, however. So what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want to people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence, which can be your website, your social media, your eBay account, Etsy, whatever it is. That you're, that you're trying to accomplish online, your, your online presence. Example, Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So again, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, in this particular example, I didn't exactly say, get traffic to our website to sell something. We said, create a powerful social media presence. So in this particular fictional company, it wants to focus on using social media more than actually perhaps a driving force of a website. And I know that I say you need a website and all of that, but depending on your business, you may be able to accomplish what you're trying without a website. I'm going to say 95% of the time you're going to need a website. But some businesses can manage really well without a website because then they're really active on Facebook or on Instagram or um, any of those social networks. 
Uh, speaking of which, because social networks are always changing, always evolving, have you heard about the brand new social network that came out less than a week ago? You hipsters haven't heard about it? Yet? Oh yeah, yeah, which one? Peach. Peach, exactly. Peach is the newest social network. Um, the the ver first version came out last week on the 7th, January 7th. Um, Peach at the moment is an iPhone only social network. So if you've got an iPhone or iPad, you can access it. It's not Android at the moment, but if you've got one of those, you can get into it. And just a quick side note, side plug, which will tie into SEO and such. I've got a video up on our up on our YouTube up on our YouTube company account, PMD. Uh, I mean, YouTube.com/PMDInteractive. I'm showing you this because not only do you need probably a website, because on the website is where we sell our services, but you also need social media because that's where you advertise. So we've got a video, how to get up and started, get up and going, uh, that one. but you've got right here, how to use Peach like a pro. So just published 10 hours ago, because this network is less than a week old, here's a brand new video to watch on how to create an account, it's free of course, how to use it, uh, and so forth. If you take my social media class, I talk in general about the concepts of social media, not that one because it's so new and it's only exclusive to iPhone, but eventually when it comes out to Android, I might talk about it in my classes. But at the moment, on the company YouTube account, PMD, uh, youtube.com slash PMD Interactive, <coughs> youtube.com slash PMD Interactive, you can watch a video on how to use Peach, the newest social network. Yet another thing to learn, I know. But that ties back into the, this, what are you trying to accomplish? Because, for example, for the PMD Interactive Company, one of the parts of the, the goal is to get clients, of course, to do websites for them and social media. But one of the ancillary goals of the PMD Company is also to educate, to give out free content to connect with interesting people because we believe in social media. We like social media. We like the back and forth of social media. So on your first question there is you have to decide what are you trying to do? And it's perfectly fine to simply say, I want to sell aluminum siding. I want to be a professional dog walker. I want to uh, be a realtor and sell houses, million dollar houses. That's fine. Uh, you want to codify that, write it down, and then maybe think about it a little bit outside the box, what else you want to do, what's your big goal to accomplish online. Once you know <clears throat> what you're trying to do online, then you can figure out who you're going to target online. It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product or your cause or group, but, just, but that just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s, who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So this always happens when we talk to a client. Okay, who are you marketing to? Who's your product going to? Who would care? Oftentimes the owner would say, well, everyone. Everyone's going to want my product. But it's just not the case. There was a, a person that we dealt with a while ago that they uh, we talked to them, who's your target audience? And they said everyone. And no, not everyone, because they were selling baby strollers. So literally, not everyone is going to care about baby strollers. Not even parents by a certain age are going to care about baby strollers. Through more talking with that potential client, he figured out that his target audience is actually first-time parents, first-time Latino parents. That's who he wanted to focus on, and that could be a great demographic to reach. But when you're saying everyone is going to want my product, then no one is going to see it because you're not focusing on an audience. Um, getting specific is very good. And notice I mentioned here the concept of personas. This is a big concept in marketing. A persona 
is basically a fictional person that you invent that represents the target audience that you're trying to reach. So this can be as complex as you want. This can be a person with a full name and biography and an education and where they live and such. And the big companies, they do this. They invent a person. Janet lives in San Diego and really likes um, MMA and we're going to target her this way. Whenever we tweet something, we're going to try to tweet two people like that persona, that specific target audience. You can have many, of course, many personas. But the uh, thing to be careful about that, of course, is if you're trying to reach too many people, too many personas, you're diluting your message. So creating a persona to target, because that will then dictate or guide how you're going to set up your website, the language of your website, what social media networks you're going to get on. For example, I'm going to target people that are uh, on the cutting edge of technology, that are always looking for something new, and have iPhones. Perhaps the demographic of Peach, the, net, the social network that just came out. Um, so you want to specify. Do you have aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. There is a business, is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, etc., that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. So this is related to that competitor analysis we touched on at the end of the day in that you researched who else is using these keywords, who else is using those long tail keywords. They've got a good website. My website doesn't look as polished. That's something I need to improve. I'm looking at another competition. They're on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I might need to do that because they have a lot of traffic. What is the competition doing? And what can I do? And what can I do better? So not just literally what are they doing on social media or on their website, but what else are they doing maybe in the real world? I have this example of that Texcoco business that I mentioned last time. Um, when we did this analysis for him a few years ago, we asked the owner, so who's your competition? Who do you feel you're trying to compete with and to, and to reach and to get better? And he said, you know, I'm trying to be like Phil's Barbecue. Um, who knows Phil's Barbecue? Lots of people. Phil's Barbecue is one of the big names in San Diego barbecue. Obviously, that's an opinion like anything else. But... Um, they're the big name in, in barbecue in San Diego, synonymous and such, very big, uh, famous and, and such. And so we thought that was interesting. This owner, Mexican food restaurant, is trying to emulate Phil's Barbecue, which is classic American barbecue. And the reason that it still makes sense, though, delving deeper, is because of the details. He says, I want for there to be a 40-minute line waiting to get in seven days a week, like Phil's Barbecue. At the moment, he's got a line for waiting on the weekends. He's getting there. He said, I want to be synonymous. I want to be synonymous with, with you know, Mexican food in San Diego, as it feels barbecue is with barbecue in San Diego. And so having those goals, maybe not exactly the same niche. He could have said another Mexican food restaurant. He could have said Tacos El Gordo or you know, some other taco shop, Lolitas or whatever. He could have said that. But he's aiming, again, a little higher. He's aiming for the bigger fish. And when you've got that goal, something to strive toward, and you have it defined, it could help you reach it. So don't just think very narrowly, okay, I'm a realtor. What are my other realtor? What are the other realtor competition? What's the other realtor competition? What opinions here? What sort of ancillary-related businesses or industries might... I think about to look at as an inspiration besides realty. I thought of that on the spot, so I don't have an answer myself. But any opinions? Who else regarding? 
What's that? Sports franchise, possibly? Very successful, sure. Some sort of sports franchise, maybe because they've also got a lot of community involvement. So, in any event, your particular business, think about a direct competition and maybe related competition within reason so that you can figure out what they're doing, what you could do better. Vision statement. Last time we had a mission statement. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon. Five years, for example. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. Notice how this aspirational competition and the target audience and the vision statement all really relate. Because if I back up to the target audience up here, I said this fictional web design company wants to target people that are trendy but that they own their own business, that they're in their 30s, understand the value of good web design. That's going toward defining a persona. Because I could say, I'm going to make websites for anyone. And I could, but if I focus on people that own their own business within their age range that understand the value of web design, I could further reach that audience a little better. When I say here value of web design, I, 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 uh, I mean it literally and figuratively. Uh, figuratively in that people understand that a good website could attract them traffic and sales and such but also literally because they know that a website does not cost $200. A good website does not cost $200, $1,000. It depends on the website and what it needs. And yes, you're going to see ads all over the place about full-featured website, $300. Uh, it might not be very customized or customizable or robust. Um, a $1,000 website might be much better for you, but still, if you've got a complex site that needs e-commerce, for example, that might be a $5,000 website. But we are going to target people that understand that value, that are not going to balk at that price, because the big tragedy of all of this web marketing stuff and web design is that people don't believe it costs this much. People might believe that this thing in my pocket might cost $500, because it's got advanced technology and I can talk to it and it's got apps and all of that. Sure, people might believe this costs $500 but they don't believe that a website, some people don't believe that a website can cost $5,000. Starting point. Easy. Not to show off, but I worked on a website that was $10,000. It's because it was a very advanced website that needed a lot of customization and high tech. So we're going to target people that are not going to lowball us, that are not going to say, okay, that sounds good, but I don't know. $500? How about two eighty, dollars and you can get exposure? <laughs> nope. Late. We can offer you students that we know. But um, that's who we're targeting, people that understand that value, a persona. Um, so that then we have this vision statement tied to that, that in some amount of time, I didn't say it in the statement, but I could have put a time, in some amount of time, we're going to be known for providing eye-catching web design focused on this target audience of restaurants. Because we can make websites for anyone, but what if we focus on great websites for great restaurants? not the local mom and pop shop, you know, more power to them, but, you know, our prices start at a certain price, we might be too high for them, we can definitely recommend others for different price points, and hopefully at a certain point you can be discerning. Maybe at the beginning you can take all comers, but at a certain point you do want to be discerning. So mission statement, vision statement. Mission is where you are now, what you're doing now. Vision statement is what you're going to be doing in some time in the future. And again, you can look up just about any company website, poke around on their about page. They'll probably have it there somewhere. Sometimes in the investor page, you will see mission statement, vision statement, values, all of that stuff. So you can get uh, advice, inspiration from most companies. I showed the college's website last time. You can look in there. <clears throat> and we've got the USP, Unique Selling Proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? 
What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is, why would a client hire you? The concept we talked about last time, the golden circles. Remember Simon Sinek. Uh, we've got uh, what, how, and why. And why is the harder one to answer. But that will be your unique selling proposition because there's plenty of web designers, plenty of realtors, plenty of tutors, plenty of bakeries, um, etc. So what's unique about you? And it's an example we've got. Vic.co is based in San Diego. And many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. Therefore, we know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to the San Diego audience, San Diego companies. Um, so maybe that's still not unique enough. I might have to brainstorm that some more. Why is our web design company more unique than any other web design company in San Diego? There's plenty of those also. Again, it might be the hardest question to answer of why, but if you can hit upon that, what can you do, what can you provide that others can't, or others not as well as you believe? That'll make you unique, and tied with answering that question of why could help you get those clients, get that job, reach that audience. So in total, this is the uh, marketing strategy document, which can be worked on at, and evolved. That's why you can add a date to it. You can print it a little later. But again, more things to think about regarding the concepts of your site. This is, a, this is the tip of an iceberg of a marketing strategy. Again, this is a whole college major. You get degrees in marketing but we're touching upon it here because it's valuable for us in the long term of SEO. The more we define our company, the better we can optimize it, market it, get traffic, get visibility, get sales, or whatever you're trying to do online. Um, any questions on the document? Right, so if you'd like, I can look at it at some point in, in, during the lab time and such.